Uh, while operations teams prepare to shift to T plus one, other parts of the organization, CRMs, risk managers, have an insatiable appetite for data. What if there are a way to increase, <coughs> sorry, to harness internal data, reduce friction, resolve exceptions faster, and collaborate at scale? I've got the distinct pleasure to welcome back to the Innovate stage, Adam Watson and Richard Ring. I promise this wasn't scripted, but Kishan just did us a nice intro, because you'll hear a few, same, few of the same terms that Kishan used. When we spoke at Innovate two years ago, we talked about interoperability, we talked about data democratization, and at the time, the Bank of New York was, was progressing on, on data analytics and using artificial intelligence to predict the likelihood of fails and using those analytics to offer an enhanced solution to our clients. And maybe a year and change ago, Rich and I had the privilege of, of being introduced to each other. And we started talking about what problems do my clients have and how can I solve those problems? So you've got macroeconomic issues, you've got regulatory change, continual cost pressures to do more for less, you know, compressing fees on the asset management side. And underpinned by that was a constant desire for data. Allow me to do more faster. And back to Ash's point from HSBC earlier, let me focus my team's time on the things that are important rather than the more menial tasks that a, a digital solution could optimize. So me and Rich kind of ideated around there are really three kinds of inquiries. You've got your you know, very vanilla, give me access to data, what's the status of my trade, what's my position, what's my holdings, et cetera. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got those complex queries where it's go away and investigate. I want you to do some research and come back with a structured response. And in the middle, you've got that real-time desire to chat. And then we realized we were, solving a separate, we were creating a separate problem. I now potentially have my operations teams monitoring upwards of hundreds of chats. And that's a problem for me because I'll miss something. But I also don't want to go back to where we are right now, which is to contextualize, we receive over 1.2 million inquiries per year in email. So how do I structure that balance between a desire to give clients real-time information, the ability to communicate real-time with chat, and then also not go back to 1.2 million emails a year? And what you're going to see today, or what we're about to show you, is some of the functionality we've developed using Symfony. This is a subset. There's a ton, ton of capabilities in here. We will be at the back at the end if you guys want to come and see some more capabilities. Thank you, Adam. So in this demo, we're going to have a light and a dark screen to show two different personas. The light screen will be Adam's end user, and the dark screen will be his operations team member. As an end user, I have access to a bot where I can query different menus. So if I type in slash menu CSE-settlements, this will bring up a menu that Adam has provided me. Are you a developer? <laughs> you said you weren't going to say this. Uh, <laughs> so, OK, so I built this, right? I'm, I'm not a developer. I'm not a technologist by background. This is a set of toolkit or a toolkit that my, in my vision is to expose this to my client service teams. It is simple to use, fully customizable and tailorable to a client based off what is important to them. So yes, I built this and it's not my skill set. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but it's, that's just to highlight that it's virtually no code. So in this one, we're gonna click get my trade status. That's all he's given me because he's not a developer and he gave me one menu choice. What I'm gonna do here is query his next API. So I'm gonna throw in just some Transaction references, maybe a BMW ISIN, and click Run Query. And this is going to go back and give me some detail from BNY's backend system. And we'll, just to be clear, what we're showing you here is a subset of the payload. So this payload, in, a, in this particular API, there are more than 300 fields. We yes. would tailor those, that payload to what the client cares about. If you want enhanced narratives, we can include that. This is just a subset. Exactly. So this doesn't make me happy, so I'm going to say no. I'm going to say, no, it didn't answer my query. I want to talk to someone. It's kind of when you pick up the phone and you push zero to get through to someone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask BNYM an expert question, or ask a BNYM expert a question. And what that's going to do is actually create a chat room for me on the left-hand side, and it aggregates all of my conversations with the CSE settlements team. And the bot itself says, if you'd like to ask me a question, use slash ask. So I'm going to type in slash ask and throw it a little bit of shade. And what that's going to do is mirror across to the dark screen. So the operations team member will see what the message was, who it came from, and they can respond directly back to that. Difference here is I can be in this room as an operations person, sort this out with my colleagues, 
and all of that context is hidden from the end user. The bot will relay the reply back to the end user when it's been complete. Which, so from my perspective, is super mm. important. I need to give my team the ability to allocate workload d depending on who's busy. I'll pick this up, you pick this up. We can communicate about this exception internally, protecting the client from that kind of showing the dirty laundry. <laughs> That's right. So Min's going to look at Min's problem for Min because Min likes Min. It's a problem when you have one demo runner and two screens. <laughs> so that'll go across. Now, that's assume they go through, they resolve their issues, and they're all happy. When Min is done, he can click on Close Case, and that'll signal to BNY that he is satisfied with his current line of questioning. Which, again, from an operational perspective, anybody that's in ops, is, in, it is incredibly important. This idea of Rich asks me a question, I respond, I think he's done. But what if he's not done? So getting that check back to say, Min is happy that you've answered his question, it's done. I don't have to have that anxiety of thinking, is there still open risk or a problem? That's right. And Min can leave Min some feedback about Min. Now. Uh, Min's performance. Uh, how do you feel today about yourself? OK, he seems happy. Excellent. So he'll submit that back through. Now, on your side, you'd like to aggregate all of that and have some analytics. So in the responder window, we can go talk to that bot directly, and we can run slash stats. And this will bring up an option to view how many times different menu items have been clicked, by whom, but as well to see how the responders are handling the customer inquiries. So if I click on responder groups, this will bring up a table which shows some of the feedback we've had. Adam likes to uh, give himself feedback a little bit. But um, you, you were know. rude, though, on the other hand. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was rude but to myself. To, to contextualize, <laughs> so from my perspective as a service provider, right, this is incredibly useful for me. There are, there are two key things we can take out of this data. Our view is of 100 inquiries, in, specifically in trade status, cash inquiries, corporate actions, about 60 to 70 can be answered by data. Another 20 to 25% is probably real-time chat, and that leaves the complex stuff for the, for the remainder. What we can see through this stats is, is that materializing? If I can see a client is asking 100 questions, but only 10 of them are satisfied by the API, and the other 80 are going to a real-time person, I can proactively come to that client and say, is my data payload not doing what it needs to do? Do I need to fix the core of the problem, which is enhancing the data set, so you don't need to ask the question in the first place? I can also come back to a client with stats like this and say, as you can tell, Rich is really rude. We should probably switch your coverage. Or hopefully, on the better side, we can positively engage our clients to articulate that there is a value add through having this real-time chat, but in a monitored and scalable way. I don't have to have my operations teams monitoring 500, 500 different chats. I can consolidate that, but I can protect the client from that internal housekeeping. But then I can also get the real-time touch base on how am I performing vis-a-vis -vis your expectations. That's right. So that concludes this part of the demo. I just would add that there's many different strategies of bringing people in. You can mirror. You can bring people in in a white glove service manner. You have plenty of different routing strategies. So please come and approach us, and you can learn more about this bot. There you go. Uh, thank you both. This is a powerful toolkit and represents an efficient opportunity to improve your operating models with your clients. One key question, what does success look like? So I had an answer, and I'm going to change my answer because of what Ash said earlier, because it stuck with me. For me, it's about time. If I get 100 inquiries versus 1,000 inquiries, I still have the same amount of operational resources to respond to those questions. If my team is spending 80% of their time answering the more menial, what's the status of my trade, what's my cash balance, my collateral position, et cetera, they're not spending time on the more complex questions that actually add values to my client. So for me, it's about time. If we can integrate data through real-time communication with our API marketplace into Symfony, then allow that real-time collaboration between operations teams, and then, then we focus on the more structured inquiries that are complex to go away and investigate, what I will do over time is I'll reduce the, responsive, the response time on those complex inquiries. I'll give way more insightful and actionable, to Kishan's point, um, responses to those inquiries, and overall, we'll allow clients to resolve exceptions incredibly fast. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Richard.